I'm going to open things up with a couple of tidbits about my team. That's what I'm here for, so let's kick off with that. This morning, we decided to make a couple of trades before we head into week two of the NFL season. We traded defensive end, now backup, once starter Bryce Fisher to the Tennessee Titans for a currently undisclosed draft pick. I'm guessing it's a fifth, optimistically a fourth, pessimistically a sixth, you know somewhere in that area, but I would guess fifth. It's an interesting trade because he is one of our two defensive ends who has actually proved something in the NFL, Kearney and Fisher. Behind him you have unproven players in Tapp, Atkins, and Babin, and I like the way those players look, don't get me wrong, but I do wonder if we should trade away veteran experience that we know is going to be good like Fisher. But the other side of that is, we couldn't afford to keep five defensive ends. And Fisher was the odd man out. I mean, he was great in 2005, but now it's 2007, and he's coming off of 2006, where he was average at best, unless, except in the playoffs. He did well in the playoffs, I'll admit that. And, so far this season, he's been dropped down the depth chart. Um, I heard maybe even to fifth string. So... Right now we're going to roll with Daryl Tapp and Patrick Kearney starting with Baratka, Atkins, and Jason Babin coming off the bench. And you only need four defensive ends in a rotation, so I like this. I'm happy we managed to get a draft pick out of this. Also in action, Charlie Fry was traded to the Seahawks this morning for a sixth round pick. Now, so far in his career, with the exception of a couple of games at the end of 2005, Charlie Fry has been terrible. Um, ever since being drafted out of Akron, he immediately got his start owing to Trent Dilfer failing to do anything for the Browns in 05, and showed flashes that season. But, in 2006, he was given the starting reins and did not go anywhere with it. 2007 was off to much of the same start, before he was benched for Derek Anderson and now got shipped away for a sixth round pick. Now, it's an interesting trade to make. I know we wanted a third quarterback. So, we now have our third quarterback, which I suppose can't be a bad thing. But, he's an inexperienced, relatively young player who hasn't done anything in his career to this point. So, that's aside, I can't help but question this move. Maybe I would have preferred Mark Brunel. However, if there is one thing Mike Holmgren can do, it is coach up quarterbacks. If Fry has any potential at all, Mike Holmgren will find it, and he will coach it out of him. And if there is any chance at all of Charlie Fry ever becoming a starting quality cornerback, or even a quality number two, Mike Holmgren will find it. I, I've i never been a huge fan of what Holmgren actually does in terms of play calling during the game, much like Andy Reid. But I do know that is something he can do better than any other coach in the league. Um... And there you have it. This will should allow Seneca Wallace to do a little more in terms of punt returns and kick returns and playing wide receiver. So keep an eye on that. That'll be interesting. Moving on from Seattle, that's about it. That concludes all those trades we made right before this season started. And now, you know, acquiring Alvin Pierman, Jason Babin, getting rid of Michael Bulware. And I think we're done now. I think that's about all we can do. Okay, here's another thing I noted when looking around. I think that the Dallas Cowboys are going to sign Tank Johnson. I, w I recently heard, actually, yeah, this morning, that Jason Ferguson is going to miss the rest of the 2007 NFL season with a torn something CL. And, well, you know, that's rough because in a 3-4 defense, that nose tackle is so important. You need a big, strong guy down there in the middle to take on multiple blockers and free up the linebackers. Without a proper nose tackle, your defensive line is set back light years. And their defensive line is weak as it is, because they don't have Greg Ellis. And at the very least, he we know he can move down to 3-4 defensive end and play that spot, but he's hurt. So now you don't have Ferguson, and you don't have Ellis. The Cowboys had 35 points thrown up on them on Sunday night by the New York Giants, and it's not going to get any better with the way things are going now. That defensive line is already hurting. Terrence Newman is hurt. Anthony Henry has not looked good. Aaron Glenn is cut. 
Um, they have two safeties that are more suited to play in the box, opposed to dropping back in coverage. But I do believe it all starts up front. So, I think Jerry Jones is going to go out, get Tank Johnson, hope to survive a weak defense the first eight weeks of the season, and then put in Tank Johnson in week nine after his suspension is up. He will be fresh, the rest of the league will be tired, and you're going to see a rejuvenated Cowboys defense from week nine on until at least the end of the regular season. Uh, I th I'm not sure if Tank Johnson has the size you would really want to play nose tackle, but he's big enough to make do. And I think this is a signing that Dallas is end up ending up going to have to make. It's a risk they're going to have to take. But they did it with T.O. I'm sure they can do it with Tank Johnson. How about those New England Patriots, huh? You know, I'm not going to take anything away from them. And if I ever do say that I am, I'm joking around. But this, you know, it's something. I mean, when I first heard about it, I, I thought that, well, even if they do get convicted or whatever, it's not going to be that big of a deal. But I guess it is because Roger Goodell just put the hammer down on them, claiming that they did indeed break a league rule and there's going to be some sort of punishment. And we're speculating now over what that punishment could be. So what do you guys think? For those of you who haven't been keeping track, the Patriots used a, hit, a camera of some sort to steal signals from the New York Jets. Some claim this gave them an unfair advantage in the game on Sunday. I don't know. I, don't, I didn't know that was even considered cheating. But in any case, now they're going to face a potential punishment, maybe a suspension, maybe they lose draft picks. I'm guessing it's going to be losing a, you know, third or second round pick. It depends. You know, Goodell, he's harsh. He's going to bring the hammer down to the full extent of his ability. So let's definitely keep an eye on this. If there is any kind of suspension, New England will be severely crippled against San Diego this upcoming week. Um... Jamarcus Russell signed yesterday, $68 million deal. He gets paid more than Mark Bulger. Is there not something wrong with that? I think there definitely is. But congratulations, took you long enough. But you've already mortgaged the 2007 season because you're not going to take a... I don't think you're going to take a single snap all season. I'm, I'm pretty sure about that. Now Brady Quinn, on the other hand, I see him getting into the action as early as next week. I got a PM from an Atlanta fan, ATL Grizzly, defending Joey Harrington. He acknowledges that the Falcons played poorly, and how could you not? But he, he defends Joey Harrington. He says neither interception was his fault, and I'll meet you halfway on that. That second interception to Winfield was not his fault. That's on Michael Jenkins. But that first interception, you got to put that on him. I know it's unrealistic to expect a defensive tackle to make an interception like that, but he threw it right to him. So, I don't know, you got to get your pass higher than that, because he threw it, the bottom line is he threw it right to him. You don't expect a defensive tackle to be back in coverage like that. So you got to put that on him. Now, that said, maybe you're right. I was a little mean to Harrington. He was relatively efficient against Minnesota, but he completely... However, he completely failed to produce points. He should have actually produced six, opposed to the three he did, but neither was any good. Neither was enough to win. And um, one interception was not his fault, but the overall point is, um, you know, Harrington was hyped up this offseason. ESPN, Falcons fans, the media, they found some... They found him to be a likable guy, which he has been his entire career. He's kind of one of those players that prove that nice guys finish last. And now they thought he was finally going to get his third chance and finally realize it. So to come out with a game like this is still very disappointing for most people who were expecting something out of Harrington. Um, that said, you got to give the offensive line some of the credit for that loss by giving up six sacks. But at the same time, some of that is on Harrington. So... I'll take back some of the things I said on Harrington. He had his moments out there, but he just couldn't get much of anything done. And at least we can both agree, Jarius Norwood is a fun player, and work done is done. Okay, I'm going to continue this in part two, so keep an eye out for that.